Hey guys, so I wasn't going to do another update before my surgery. Um, as I said in my last video, my next video about my surgery would be probably the day of my surgery. But I decided to do one last video before my surgery, which is in two days. I'm so nervous. Oh my gosh. And the reason I'm doing this video is just because, um, just for people to be aware of some things. Um, for instance, last... Saturday, I believe. I went to Disneyland with my son to celebrate his eighth grade graduation. I don't know what happened. I woke up. I wasn't feeling very well, so I kind of got nervous. I didn't want to be away at Disneyland not feeling well, so I took some Pepto-Bismo um, just to make sure, you know, nothing crazy happened while I was at the park. I checked my list of medications that my doctor told me not to take two weeks prior to my surgery and Pepto-Bismol was not one of those medications listed on there. Um, when you go to your doctor, my doctor is Dr. Tanasia, my doctor gave me this whole little um, folder with a bunch of stuff in it and so this is a list of medications that they say not to take. Now it's basically aspirin and ibuprofen medications because I believe that it can thin your blood out and so obviously that just leads to more bleeding when you're doing your surgery and I also think it can leave more bruising if I'm not mistaken. They did tell me if you know I have any pain like headaches or anything before my surgery and I absolutely can't stand it. Um, I can take Tylenol. Tylenol was okay to take. They, of course they asked you are you on any other medications and I'm not on any medications except for my birth control which I take every day and so as most people do they probably don't really think about oh you know that they're not on any medication unless it's something daily. But then as time went on and I'm, you know, two weeks out, one week out, I'm like, oh, wait a minute, I take Benadryl because I have allergies. Oh, I have eczema and I rub on um, eczema cream. Or, you know, I don't know, just random medications that you might be taking that you don't realize like, oh, I do take this medication, it's just not on a daily basis. So every time I've had any medication that I feel like I needed to take, I called my doctor, they give me the okay, Benadryl is fine. But I didn't call to find out if Pepto-Bismol was fine. And so something told me to Google Pepto-Bismol and surgery. And it also says online that you shouldn't take Pepto-Bismol 14 days prior to surgery. Now, grant you, I went to Disneyland on Saturday. My surgery is on Friday. Um, so, of course, I start freaking out. I'm like, oh, my God, what do I do? I took this Pepto-Bismol. Um, but again, it's not on this list. So I'm in a group on Facebook. So, of course... They're not doctors, they're just a bunch of women like myself who have gotten surgery or are going to get surgery. So I just had to ask, did anyone ever take Pepto-Bismol before surgery? Like, what's gonna happen to me? Like, am I gonna die? Like, I don't know, because I started freaking out. And so I was trying not to freak out too much though because my doctor did not tell me not to take it, but Google said not to take it, and so that kind of freaked me out. So um, I feel better now because um, this woman said, I'm not telling you to take it or not take it, just letting you know my story. She said the night before her surgery, she was, you know, she got a stomach bug and she was like, I'm not about to change my surgery. So she downed a half a bottle of Pepto-Bismol, two Gatorades, two o'clock in the morning before her surgery. And she said she was totally fine. Nothing happened to her. So that made me feel better. I know everybody's different. And, um, you know, obviously you should talk to your doctor. I'm not a doctor, but you know, I'm just letting you know this story because if you are thinking about getting surgery, just make sure you check with your doctor every single thing, even if it's not on this list of medications to not take. Um, I'm not gonna go through all these medications because it's like way too many, but the basic common ones that you cannot take at absolutely at all for at least 14 days before your surgery is like Advil, Aleve, Alka-Seltzer, um, basically anything that's aspirin. Um, they say don't take, I'm, I'm just trying to read the common ones that you, you would probably take. A lot of these I've never even heard of, so I don't even know. Um, oh, they say do not take any, um, I think it said don't take any decongestants. I think it said that on here. I could have sworn I saw that somewhere. Oh yeah, no decongestant, no decongestants. I don't know why I can't say that word. Um, which may not be a big deal, but for people that are sick or you get a cold right before your, um, surgery or you have like bad allergies like myself, I haven't taken any decongestant decongestants this whole time and so that's been kind of hard for me because I have allergies but I have been able to take Benadryl which has been really awesome. Um, they also suggest that you don't take um, Motrin um, which is also aspirin and a whole bunch of like other weird medications that I don't even know if this is what these are. And so, but they also say, which I don't have a list here, but um, I do remember the doctor 
telling me, you know, don't take any vitamins, you know, because I wanted to take probiotics before my surgery because my body is very sensitive to things and so when I take antibiotics, I don't mean to give you too much information, but every time I take antibiotics, for the most part, I usually wind up getting yeast infection because it does, whatever gives you a yeast infection, the antibiotics is like killing the thing that protects you from getting these infections and so it, it, it is attacking, it's like it's healing your stomach from any like crazy diseases that you might, not diseases, but any crazy um, sicknesses you might get, but it's also attacking your good yeast or whatever's inside your stomach. And so for me, I'm just really sensitive to that. So I wanted to build my stomach up to hopefully not have it broken down and I can't really do that. I don't know exactly why you can't, you know, obviously you, you would talk to your doctor about that. Um, so I'm a little nervous about what's gonna happen, but I mean, it is what it is. If I get a yeast infection, I'm just gonna obviously have to take some yeast infection medication when that comes across. So um, yesterday I picked up my medication I'm not really big on medication. I don't like taking it if I don't have to. Um, you know, my birth parents come from a history of being drug addicts, and so I get very paranoid when I'm prescribed something, especially if it's something that can be addictive or that is, um, what do you call it, like, um, I forget what you call it, like when the doctor has to prescribe it to you, um, well, obviously all medications doctors have to prescribe to you, but there's certain medications that are con all controlled substances. Like I'm not really a fan of those um, because I'm scared that what if I get addicted to this? I know for my first surgery I had 12 years ago, for some reason, my doctor gave me morphine and I hated it. Like I literally think I took it for maybe two days because I hated the way it made me feel. I was hallucinating. My body was not agreeing with it. And I was like, I'd rather be in pain than take this morphine. And like, I'm assuming that's what it feels like to be on drugs. I don't know. Cause I never did drugs, but that definitely was not for me. So I've been kind of scared <laughs> this time around to see what my doctor gives me. Um, so, so far he's given me my antibiotic, which is the normal thing you know everyone has to take antibiotics when they get surgery and so this one is 500 milligrams it says take one capsule by mouth four times a day i just hate taking pills especially big pills i don't know if you can like see these but i just i don't know i don't like doing that um for my pain medication they gave me hydrocodone i don't think i've ever taken this i'm a little nervous to take it again it's a pain medication and it is a controlled substance um they don't look that big the pills but I'm praying that it will help me with my pain and it will not make me hallucinate or like do anything crazy to my body because if it does I will definitely stop taking it and just be in pain because I'd rather do that than be addicted to something or like hallucinate and like feel weird. The other medication they gave me was Caris... I don't even know. Uh, Carisopodal? I don't know. It's for muscle spasms. You know, because when you get surgery, especially since I'm getting my implants removed and replaced, they are foreign objects that are coming into my body. And so sometimes your body tries to reject something that's not normal to that to them. And so you will probably get muscle spasms and this will help with that. And then the last medication they gave me was um, on Dansafron or is that an F or a T? I feel like I'm going blind. Um, maybe it's on Dansafron. Fron or Tron? I don't know. It's for nausea. So this is as needed. Um, they told me to bring all my medications with me the day of my surgery. So I'm going to do that. Unfortunately, you cannot eat, they say, from 12 o'clock midnight the night before until your surgery. My surgery is not scheduled until 1.30 in the afternoon. So I'm like, how am I supposed to go 13 and a half hours without, not, without, without eating or at least drinking something? And so I started freaking out. And so then I wound up calling them back and saying, hey, like, can I at least drink water? Like, I feel like I'm gonna die if I have no water for 13 and a half hours. Like, that sounds crazy. And so they told me that, you know, the standard is eight hours before it's no food or drink. So they said, um, as long as I cut off my water by 5.30, that would be okay. So I was like, okay, like, I feel better with that, even though it's still gonna be hard for me to not drink water or eat anything for eight hours. And it's not that it's hard, it's just because I can't do it. So because you're telling me I can't do it now, I know I want to do it. So yeah, that's, that's where that's at. Um, what else? So I got my surgical bra. Um, so now my doctor, they have, um, they will give you a surgical bra if you pay an additional $60. Um, you need a post-op surgical bra after, especially if you're getting implants. I don't know about, um, if you're getting like a lift or something, I don't know what that 
is you know what you need for that but for implants you definitely need a surgical bra it's sixty dollars and so i didn't realize this until like a week ago when i was just going through my paperwork and i was like oh i need a surgical bra i thought that they would just give it to me and it was included in my payment but it wasn't so i don't really like their surgical bra because it's like a tan color it looks kind of ugly um not that anyone's going to be really seeing my bra obviously because i'll be recovering but i want to be comfortable and feel pretty at you know in my bra and be able to wear it with other things when I am able to you know go out and walk around and do things like that so I decided to do my own research I found this bra it's a surgical bra it's from Target and it was only $30 and it's the brand is Annette it says Annette fits you only 30 bucks it's black they have it in beige too but i didn't want beige it is a post surgical bra i showed my um i didn't show the doctor but i showed one of the nurses the picture um online of the bra i was ordering they said it was fine so i'm gonna bring it with me obviously to my surgery and they said that they'll have their surgical bra on hands in case you know my bra is not good enough for some reason which it should be they said it should be fine but of course i'm always paranoid and so um I thought why not save 30 bucks and or just be able to get two bras for $60. So basically the surgical bra has to open in the front so it's easy to put on and off when you get your surgery because you're not going to want to lift your arms up or you know try to reach on the back to unsnap your bra. So that's what I have for that and then um let's see. My pre-op instructions which is pretty much for everybody again like I said I can take Tylenol, but no aspirin containing medication for two weeks prior to surgery. Obviously, no diet pills or fat burners like that would just be common sense. Four weeks prior to surgery, um, no smoking. I don't smoke, so I'm good with that. Um, they said if you take medications or supplements on a regular basis to make sure you inform the medical staff, which obviously I already did. Um, all labs, EKG, whatever needs to be cleared, that was done. Don't eat or drink anything. We know that. They say wear comfortable clothing to the surgery. They say nightgown or a robe or sweatpants and a zip-up button-down shirt. So I'm ready to do that. You can't wear any makeup, which I could care less about doing. Um, I barely wear it anyway. They say no nail polish on your fingers. You can have it on your toes. I don't know why. I'm guessing maybe if something goes wrong, maybe your fingernails will turn a different color. I don't know, but I'm sure it's a safety precaution thing which I'm fine with. I don't care about painting my nails. Um, if you wear contact lenses, which I do because I'm blind as a bat, <laughs> um, you have to remove them and bring your glasses, which I will be doing. And then it says arrange to have someone drive you home, obviously. They say bring saltine, ca saltine crackers and Gatorade for your ride home, which I will have on deck for sure because I feel like I'm going to be starving by the time I get out of there. And that's basically, that's it. So I'm really excited. I'm really nervous. I don't know, hopefully I, I pray that I heal really well and I won't have any problems because again, I'm in that breast um, implant group and some women are like, oh, I just had my surgery a few hours ago, I feel great, nothing's bothering me and I feel like I can go for a walk. And then others are like, oh my God, I'm in so much pain. And then a week or two later, they have like weird infections and just are not healing properly. So my prayer and hope is that everything will be a-okay, especially since this is my second time going around doing this. So what I decided to do in my downtime, because I know I'm going to have a lot of downtime recovering, I know that I am not good at sitting still and being idle, I have ADD, and I just don't like sitting down doing nothing. Like obviously if I'm sick that's different, like I don't have a choice, but if I feel like I feel good and I could do stuff, I don't, <laughs> my worry is that I'll start doing things too quicker than I should, and so I don't want to do that. So I definitely took out all my shirts out of my, um, my Etsy shop because I cannot make the shirts with my heat press so I won't be doing that. I did leave on my iron-ons that you can apply at home yourself because I can I feel like after about a week I'll be okay with making those because I literally press the button on my computer and my machine cuts it all out so I should be fine with that. My tutus I just extended the make time to three to four weeks you know just in case because I they said after two weeks I can definitely go back to work after a week possibly depends on how I feel. So I decided while I'm healing, I'm going to be watching a lot of Netflix, um, catching up on all my recorded DVR shows. If you guys have any suggestions on what to watch on Netflix, please leave that below because I'm very new to Netflix. The only thing I've ever watched on Netflix was Seven Seconds, which was an awesome series, and I binge watched that. So I'm definitely looking forward to anything you guys suggest. Um, I did start writing a book about two, three years ago, and then I kind of stopped doing it. 
and put it to the side about my life. So I think I will be picking that back up while I'm recovering and, you know, finishing that up hopefully. And then I also um, was part of a Disney swap on Instagram. I know I'm corny, but I love Disney. And so there are groups where you do these like secret swaps and you get assigned a person and, you know, you get these gifts of whatever the theme is, which this one was Disney. And so my swap partner gave me a bunch of stuff and in it she included this Disney villains um, puzzle, which I think is so cool and I love doing puzzles. I just never have time to do puzzles. And so I'm looking, actually looking forward to doing this because I have plenty of time to do that. So, and then today I bought this um, Disney Muppet adult coloring book. I know it's probably, you guys probably think I'm cornball, but I actually like doing stuff like this. And so I just never can do it because I'm so busy being a mom, being a wife, working at home, doing my YouTube. Like I just, I don't have time. And so I feel like I'm going to have extra time to do things that I like to do and that entertain me. So I'm looking forward to doing that. So if you guys are getting surgery, I definitely suggest um, you finding things to do while you're recovering. That's, you know, not too crazy that you can, you know, still recover, but still enjoy yourself and not feel like you're stuck to the couch. So that's what I wanted to share with you guys today about my surgery before I go in. And now for sure, the next surgery video you see for me will be my surgery will probably be the night before. I'll probably record that going to the surgery, coming out of the surgery. I might be loopy, so please don't make fun of me if I start talking crazy in my video. I don't know. I'm a little nervous. And um, I will definitely have, you know, my post-op, you know, day one, day two, whatever. And then just updating on what's going to happen with Dr. Tanasia. So I'm really excited and I'll talk to you guys later.